Hey, you folks, how you doing? This is Wayne Pierce. WayneSPierce.com. Check that out if you would, please. Thank you. Got to go. I have a uh, link there to GoFundMe, so if you want to support the American Liberty Radio Network, you can right from there. It's all right. It's cool. Try it on. Hey, <clears throat> pardon me. Got a little something there. Uh, what's been going on? I'm serious. What has been going on? Well, I want to make sure that we all are on the same page. Okay? Because it's really, really important that we understand what's going on. Okay? And at least for me, I believe that we need to know what's going on. At least for me, I'd like to know what's going on. Okay? We got some information here that uh, you might be interested in from James Lynn and Jared Bernstein over at uh, the Economic Policy Institute. And this was from uh, uh, 29th of October, 2008. And it's a briefing paper. And it's briefing paper number 224. And the question is always asked, what is the actual cost of living? This is important because we have to know these things. What is the actual cost of living? You know, what does it cost us to actually live? I mean, seriously. Is there something that uh, we're overlooking? Is there something that we need that is so important? I don't know. Uh, Let me read you the first paragraph here. Maybe this will give you a clue as to you know, what this uh, paper is all about. Paper number 224 from James Lynn and Jared Bernstein over at Economic Policy Institute. How much income do families need to make ends meet? The question has profound implications for public and social policy, yet it is a challenge to answer with precision because, though seemingly simple, it is actually quite complex. First of all, we need to ask which... Which type of family? Excuse me. Working families? Single parent families? Families with two adults and two children? Four children? And what does it mean to make ends meet? Are we thinking about basic uh, sustenance levels, housing, food, clothing, and, and, and keeping a step ahead of hunger or eviction? Or do we have something in mind more in cle- keeping a, uh, with middle class levels of consumption? And what about savings? Does making ends meet include setting aside funds for medical emergencies, college tuition, or retirement? These are big questions, folks. So you might want to look that up. I I have the whole thing in front of me, but I'm not going to read the whole thing now. It's uh, from the Economic Policy Institute, dated 29th of October, 2008. It's in a briefing paper, number 224, by James Lynn and Jared Bernstein. You might want to go look that up. Check out what it is. But there's so much that we're... Uh, I'm going to say it. There's so much that we are oblivious about. We just, we, we just don't know. We, we don't care to know. We don't want to know. We don't have any inkling to even care. And, you know, it's kind of funny that we have that mindset. Uh, I, I, I wonder sometimes why people ignore the obvious. That's just me. I I ignore certain things, but you know what I ignore? Negative stuff. People want to contradict me. It's all negative. It doesn't matter. To me, I just look at it and go, yeah, that's what you think. You know, if you're not willing to sit down with me and, and really, you know, have a conversation with me to find out who I am, I'm not going to waste my time listening to anything you have to say if it's negative. 
If it's a contradiction or a, a, a complete uh, opposition to the things I say, why should I waste my time listening to you? Ah, but that's a good question, isn't it? That's a good question, considering the fact that no matter what you listen to, no matter what you see, no matter what you hear, is going to be something that you're going to learn, is it not? Seriously, is it not something you're going to learn? And throughout the years when I've been confident that the information I have is correct, I find that later on, I may find something about that issue or subject that I've overlooked before. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm wrong. It just means I overlooked it and (laughs) missed something in my assessment. Okay? So to hold on to a certain belief and say, this is all there is to know and I'm not going to be swayed in any direction whatsoever by any political or religious figure and why this is what I think and that you know what talk about living your sheltered life I mean that whole you've just put yourself in a shelter that you're not going to get out of in other words you've blocked everybody out with putting up your emotional and psychological walls and say I don't want to deal with this you've done that and you have a you have only one option in that in that arena. You only have one option, and that is knock down the walls and learn. Because if you're so stuck in one belief, you're not going to care what anybody says if it's in opposition to what you believe. You see... When you have an open mind and you're a free thinker, things come to you much easier. And you you, you seem to have this, 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 well, let me give you a comparison here. Most people with that mindset don't even think about the degree of frustration other people have because they don't care. But when you have a free-thinking, open-minded person looking at someone like that or looking at their opposition as well, you're going to find somebody that has learned a great deal more than you ever have. So don't you think the opportunity to learn more should be taken? Should be met? Oh, don't get me wrong. There's challenges. You bet there are. So when you look at your life and you look at what you're making and you look at how much you're making an hour and all this, that, and the other thing, think about this for a minute. Why are you in opposition of the facts and the truth when it comes to the ramifications of your, uh, of your actions? In other words, you, you see these people out there protesting for $15 an hour at fast food. Really? Do you know the ramifications of your actions? Have you anticipated what could happen? And it has happened, by the way. So not a lot of people really look at that. Not a lot of people really care about that. Not a lot of people will look at any of that and say, well, you know what, it's not going to affect me, so I don't really care. I want my money, and that's just the way it is. Well, you better start looking at how it's going to affect other people, including the company you work for, because at some point they're not going to be able to afford you. And guess where you will be? Uh Uh-huh. Hey, I'm going to take a little break. Don't go away. I'll be back. Go to waynespierce.com if you're not already there. Also, go to AmericanLibertyRadio.com. Check that out as well. I got a lot of stuff over there. And if you want to email me, you can. AmericanLibertyRadio at USA.com. AmericanLibertyRadio at USA.com. I want to hear from you. Thank you. Be right back after this. The reality underneath the honesty. Listen to Brian Lang over at Live Truth Radio. 
Go to LiveTruthRadio.com for more information. What we see is not reality. It is distorted reality. Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. The only choice for all your independent hits on the internet. Radio Rock 92.6 The Blitz. Go to RadioRockTheBlitz.blogspot.com Hey, folks, how you doing? This is Wayne S. Pierce right here. If you're not already there, go to waynespierce.com. Check it out. I got a lot of things going on there. So let me let me run in this direction, <laughs> if I would. <clears throat> There's a lot of uh, talk about this whole issue of uh, the immigrants. It's just a bunch of talk. So here we are. Here we are. We're, 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 we're taking this whole issue about immigrants to a very emotional level. So let's calm our nerves, shall we? And just calm down for a little bit and ask what is the purpose? What is the purpose of our government allowing all of this to happen? What is the purpose? What What is the end goal? What's the end goal? How, how do you, how do you, well, first of all, how do you justify allowing these illegal uh, aliens into our country? That's number one. Number two, how do you, stop them from coming into the country? And that's a good question, isn't it? And number three, how do we get them out? Now, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know people are going to say, you can't do it. They've come here because of religious persecution. No, they didn't. Our founding fathers in those 200 years prior to that came here because of religious persecution. These illegal immigrants, these illegal aliens, these Syrian refugees, these people, upwards to 60% of them are terrorists coming into the United States. There's already terrorist cells in the United States. The FBI knows about it. The CIA knows about it. Well, you know why they know about it? Because they set them up. And don't give me this crap that they didn't, because I don't believe you. Matter of fact, I got the information to prove and history to back it up that we've had the enemy on our continent for a very long time. If you even think about how important freedom and liberty are, you would know that what is happening right now with the illegal immigrants and the illegal aliens is totally, totally outside the norm of what is right. What is right? Well, you decide that, but I'm going to tell you for me, I can't speak for anyone else, but I'll tell you for me what's right. And that is close the damn borders. We don't need to vet. We don't need to research. We don't need to do a background check on any of these people coming in here. We need to kick their asses out. That's the way it is. Well, if they go back to their country, they're going to die because their leaders are against them. 
democracy, I don't really care. If a person cannot take responsibility for themselves and do what's right, and then look around and say, wait a minute, somebody's ta- trying to take my God-given rights away from me, and if they don't stand up for themselves, I'm not going to do it. Because one, I'm not in their country, and two, I'm not under their laws. So I can't do it. There's no way. But if they want to come here and experience freedom, peace, security, and liberty in a country, then they come here legally. Okay? That's just the way it is. Because I wouldn't go to Canada or Germany or England without trying to, you know, find a way to apply for citizenship there if I wanted to move there. I wouldn't just show up at the front door and go, hey, give me a job and give me free stuff. That's stupid. So pack up all these yahoos that we have here and send them home. If they can't find the responsibility or or, or not even responsibility, but if they can't find, you know, within themselves the ability to understand what peace, liberty, freedom, and security is and round people up to defend that in their own country... Don't come here and don't call us because we ain't coming to help. We, you know, you can look, and, and, and I say all that to make this point. Look at where our military is. Our military is not fighting for our freedom in another country. That just doesn't make any sense to me. If they were fighting for our freedom, they'd be here closing the damn borders from the invaders from other countries. Then, then, not not that I don't already stand for the military and, and am patriotic and will do whatever I can to help, but then, when they say they're fighting for our freedoms, I'll believe it. Okay? I don't need some Yahoo general telling me that a platoon of soldiers over in Iraq is fighting for my freedoms. No, that's just completely stupid, and he needs to retire already you know what i mean sorry i had to take a drink of pepsi there (laughs) i'm a pepsi man myself so let's take a look at all this immigration stuff shall we it's been going on for quite a few decades now how are you gonna stop it Okay. How are you going to take care of the situation within itself? I mean, you know, w- within yourself and then go out and take care of the situation out in the general public. How are you going to do that? I I I I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I do know that there are a lot of people out there who um, are literally, to be honest with you, leaving this country because they don't like the immigrants coming here. Oh, and by the way, statistics show... show the Department of Immigration and, and other organizations have shown that the Mexicans are leaving this country more than they are coming into this country. So you tell me how important immigration is. Is it going to fix itself? No, I, I doubt that very seriously. Go to WayneSPierce.com if you're not there already. WayneSPierce.com Check it out. You could also go to American Liberty Radio Network. You can email me at American Liberty Radio Network at USA.com. The website is American Liberty Radio.com. American Liberty Radio.com. And I'll be back right after this. American Liberty Radio Network. American Liberty Radio.com. 
When the coffee is done, sit down and have a cup and listen to the best independent music station on the web. Radio Rock 92.6 The Blitz. Tom Slick delivers all the independent hits and talks about new music from all of your favorite artists. Listen to Tom Slick on the Morning Brew, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, only on Radio Rock 92.6 The Blitz. For more information, go to RadioRockTheBlitz.blogspot.com. Are you a voice actor? Would you like to perform on radio plays? Send your audition clips to Eastland Radio Theater. Scripts are available. Send your information to Eastland Radio Theater at USA.com. Hey folks, how you doing? This is Wayne S. Pierce, right here for your intellectual enjoyment <clears throat> as I get stuff. So I drank something before coming back on air, sorry. For your intellectual enjoyment and enlightenment is what I meant to say. Okay, anyway. Hey, I got a question. If you're out and about... And you see a parent scolding their child in public. What's the first thought that goes through your head? Yeah, I know I want to, you know, do... (laughs) I want to do something too. But, you know... Before my... Before my divorce... I was a step-parent. Yes, I've been divorced. Ooh, bad. I was a step-parent and I really liked the kids... They were uh, the youngest at that time, many years ago, was uh, nine years old. And now the youngest is like in his 20s, so it's been a while. So anyway, it, uh, it really puts a person in a position where their perspective of children changes. <laughs> okay, so when I see a, a a parent scolding a child or yelling or just, you know, come over her, you know, doing that kind of stuff with the child, just being unparental with the child. Hey, is that a new word? I think I just created a new word. My first thought is that per- person should not be a parent. That person should not be a parent because as you look at it you find that that child toward that parent is seen to be from the parent's perspective an inconvenience okay now of course we all grow out of that stage don't we Now, the reason why I say this is because of the fact that I was a child, too, and made my mom's day of shopping a living hell as well. So, how did the problem solve itself? A lot of parents tell me, you have to distract a child. You have to distract a child or move the child into a positive area. (laughs) You know, okay. Okay, stop reading Dr. Spock and or Dr. Wayne Dyer or any number of those people and realize one very, not that they're wrong people to read, I'm just saying, my point is, you're a parent, use your instincts and remember one simple little thing, you were a child once yourself. So how did you act? How did how did your folks react? How did, you know, so you got to think about that stuff. So that's my little thing about kids. <laughs> so um, let's change gears here. 
and go here um, as soon as I grab the right mouse for the right computer. <laughs> it's it's one of those days, folks. What can I say? Um, <clears throat> the um, the thing that really really gets me. And like I said, I'm changing gears. I'm going into this direction. The New Yorker. If you go to the New Yorker dot com. NewYorker.com, you will see this headline at some point. Scientists, Earth endangered by new strain of face-resistant humans. Or, excuse me, not face-resistant. Let me go to break. It's called Scientists, Earth endangered by new strain of fact-resistant humans. Fact, F-A-C-T, not F-A-C-E. Uh, so let me go to break, um, in a couple of minutes, uh, for a second there, I thought it was at the bottom of the hour. Sorry. <laughs> Scientist earth endangered by new strain of fact resistant humans. Andy Borowitz over at New Yorker.com wrote this. Thank you, Andy. Scientists have discovered a powerful new strain of fact-resistant humans who are threatening the ability of Earth to sustain life, a sobering new study reports. Now, this might sound like it's from The Onion, but it's not. It's from Borowitz Reports. It's on the NewYorker.com. Take it from there. <laughs> so what I, you know, what can I say? The research conducted by the University of Minnesota identifies a vir virulent strain of humans who are virtually immune to any form of verifiable knowledge, leaving scientists at a loss as to how to combat them. Quote, the humans appear to have all the faculties necessary to receive and process information, Davis Logsdon, one of the scientists who contributed to the study, said, uh, Quote, and yet, somehow, they have developed defenses that for all intents and purposes have rendered those faculties totally inactive, unquote. Again, folks, it sounds like it's from the onion, but it's not. Okay? More worryingly, Logston said, quote, as facts have multiplied, their defenses against those facts have only grown more powerful, unquote. Okay? I'm just putting it out there, folks. I'm going to put this on the, uh, if it's not on there already, uh, I'm going to put this on the American Liberty Radio Network Facebook page. Okay? You can go find this right there on the American Liberty Radio Network Facebook page. How can... <laughs> go to break here in about a minute. How can anyone... How can anyone... Not look at the facts and realize or come to the conclusion that it's true. Huh? I'm just putting it out there, folks. How can they? Because here we are living with information all around us. And you're going to ignore the facts? Huh? Doesn't make any sense to me at all. Doesn't make any sense to me at all. Contact me at American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. Go to the website, WayneSPierce.com. That's W A Y N E. The letter S as in Sam, P-I-E-R-C-E dot -E com. You can email me at American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. Talk to you in a bit. Be right back after this break.
The Grand Adventure. Yeah. From the directorial debut of Brian James Griffo, two brothers faced with a rare genetic disease that causes blindness decide to take a journey of a lifetime and answer the question, what would you see if you knew you were going to go blind? It honestly makes me feel so small and like whatever problems I have are nothing. What would you do? You're supposed to smell it first. Who would you meet? This is an opportunity for us to connect with people. Oh, I can see you for In a groundbreaking documentary that cuts to the heart of what it means to be a brother. It blows my mind that a hundred years ago, this is how people would have done this trip that we're doing. Yep. And gain a world of vision while losing eyesight. Come along to be inspired and reminded of the very meaning of life through a 12,000 mile road trip. Driving blind. Coming soon. Coming to America. <laughs> Hey, this is Frank Hannon. I want to tell you about an exciting brand new rock and roll album coming out this year by guitarist Greg Golden. Greg Golden's new album is some old school sound and rock and roll music that's sure to be a classic, featuring some killer songs, blazing guitar solos, and awesome lead vocals by Jeff Sandoval and Randy Skulls from Montrose. Take a listen to some of these songs on this album. Check out the new Greg Golden album coming out on Red Hawk Records this year. www.greggoldenband.com service of this kind, offering you fast and easy access to the very best talent from around the world. Creating your own audio doesn't have to be difficult or time-consuming. Music Radio Creative is your source for all of your audio and production needs. That's Music Radio Creative. MusicRadioCreative.com The only choice for all your independent hits on the internet. Radio Rock 92.6 The Blitz. Go to RadioRockTheBlitz.blogspot.com.
Are you a voice actor? Would you like to perform on radio plays? Send your audition clips to Eastland Radio Theater. Scripts are available. Send your information to Eastland Radio Theater at USA.com. Hey folks, how you doing? This is Wayne Pierce. Uh, yeah, what can I say? If there's anything that we've learned in life, what was it? Well, we have to live in peace with those around us. We have to tolerate others, including their opinion and their impatience. Really? Well, that's always good. I'm not saying it isn't. I'm just saying that uh, as stuff falls off of my desk, uh, I'm just saying that if we look at what is causing all of the frustrations in our life on an individual basis, Chances are, if you look at other people, you're going to find the same frustrations in them. But they're not going to say anything. Excuse me, this goes back to the subject of children. Because you can be really impatient with children, can't you? Think about that one. We were once children. Think about that one. And then answer that question that I asked earlier. What would you do if you saw a parent scolding their child in public? Think about that for a minute. From the New Yorker, scientist, Earth endangered by new strain of fact-resistant humans. This is coming from the Borowitz Report. (sighs) Scientists have discovered a powerful new strain of fact-resistant humans who are threatening the ability of Earth to sustain life, a sobering new study reports. The research conducted by the University of Minnesota identifies a virulent strain of humans who are virtually immune to any form of verifiable knowledge, leaving scientists at a loss as to how to combat them. Quote, the humans appear to have all the faculties necessary to receive and process information, unquote. Davis Logston, one of the scientists who contributed to the study, said, quote, and yet somehow they have developed defenses that for all intents and purposes have rendered those faculties totally inactive, unquote. More worryingly, Logston said, quote, as facts have multiplied, their defenses against those facts have outgrown more power uh, have only grown more powerful. While scientists have no clear understanding of the mechanisms that prevent the fact resisting humans from absorbing data, they theorize that the strain may have developed the ability to intercept and discard information en route from the auditory nerve to the brain. Quote, the normal functions of human consciousness have been completely nullified, unquote, Logston said. While reaffirming the gloomy assessments of the study, Logston held out hope that the threat of fact-resistant humans could be mitigated in the future. Quote, Our research is very preliminary, but it's possible that they will become more receptive to facts once they are in an environment without food, water, or oxygen, unquote, he said. By the way, folks, I just wanted to let you know, that's all satire. Okay, just letting you know, it's all satire. Get news satire from the Borowitz Report delivered to your inbox. There you go. Andy Borowitz is a New York Times bestselling author and comedian who has written uh, for The New Yorker since 1998. He writes the Borowitz Report for NewYorker.com. Okay. There you go, folks. It's satire. (laughs) Just wanted to let you know. (laughs) 
<laughs> a lot of people take it seriously, but I don't. Okay? A lot of people would say, well, oh, oh God, there, there's, they've been duped or, or they've had implants or something like that. No, 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 folks. What part of satire do you not understand? <laughs> I don't know, folks. We can go from there. We can laugh about all this stuff. But sometimes, sometimes, I mean, not all the time, but sometimes we have to take it seriously. When you look at satire and what it is based from, eh, takes a little while to find the facts, doesn't it? Just putting it out there. Just putting it out there. Okay? Here's something of a Well, here's the truth, and I'm not going to hold back. Mathematical proof. Accepting refugees increases risk. Simple math shows risks increases with more refugees. Okay. That's from Infowars.com. I will put that on Facebook as soon as I copy and paste. <laughs> I will put that on my Facebook page, American Liberty Radio Network. And it's important to to understand that when you put yourself in a position where you're accepting refugees into your country, chances are they're going to keep coming and coming and coming. And it's going to put a strain on your whole system this is no there's no doubt about that folks none whatsoever i would rather see a country totally close off any opportunity for any immigrant let's speak for the united states for a minute Cut them all off. Don't allow them to come here. Make every effort to stop them. Okay? I just uh, posted something about uh, uh, drugs in Portugal, I believe it was. They legalized all of it, made it a health is issue instead of a criminal issue, and drug use and drug abuse went down over 85%. I posted that and somebody said, well, that's never going to end. The drug war is never going to end because it's too profitable. Uh, that was the gist of what he said. And I totally agree. I absolutely agree. It's profitable for the attorneys. It's profitable for the courts. It's profitable for the probation officers. It's profitable for the police who uh, and sheriffs who confiscate all that stuff. Oh, it's very profitable. So why would they want to end it? <laughs> you know, why would they want to end <clears throat> the war on drugs? I'm wondering. I, I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm curious. Uh, just you know, curious in terms of. I. I. I want to know. And it, it. It is something that that really. I. <sighs> I'll put it this way. It's something that, that literally had me rolling, okay, one time when I looked at the information on, <clears throat> on uh, the internet. Here we are. Let me let me accumulate all this stuff that I've that I've picked up. We've <laughs> We've seen the drug war and what it costs. 
We've seen it. There it is. We know the price that it's costing us, the taxpayer. But I've seen some statistics, and I'll throw them all together here in a general assessment and tell you that it's an unwinnable war due to the fact that there's too much profit in it. Okay? It's too much profit in it. All right? I I know this. I see this. It's there. It's right there in front of our face. There's absolutely no way that you can ignore it. Absolutely no way you can ignore it. It's 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 there. And I guarantee you that that as we <laughs> as we go on continuing with this false drug war that is not helping at all we're going to lose we are going to lose okay there's no doubt about that. We're going to lose. I'm trying to do two things at once here, folks. If I sound a, a little off, then that's the reason why. Um, the thing that really had me going was... The fact that, you know, with this drug war, the the thing that had gotten me really going in this was the fact that people can't see the the whole issue of what it's costing. Okay. And uh, it really does cost quite a bit, okay? I mean, look at the statistics. Go look them up. I'm not going to give them to you. Go look them up. I'm done doing two things at once here. I can concentrate now. But the drug war is a losing war, and guess who's losing the biggest? It's not the drug cartels. It's not the streetwise drug dealer. It's you and I, because we're forking out all this money on, on property taxes, city taxes, county taxes, uh, you know, road tax, all this. It's a losing battle, folks. We need to end it. My whole point is this. Legalize all drugs. Portugal did it. Why not? Okay. Make it a health issue instead of a criminal issue. Make it an issue that, well, don't make it an issue. Legalize and decriminalize marijuana. Legalize hemp. Legalize cannabis. Whatever it is you want to call it. I don't care. Legalize it. Decriminalize it. Well, we can't do that. No, we can't, because it's too profitable for law enforcement and for the courts and for the probation officers. So what do we do? I don't know. I'm going to change gears here and go, go into this direction. There's uh, plenty of stuff to talk about, but I've only got a few minutes left, so bear with me. I'm kind of hanging out here on uh, on Facebook. Muslims have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism. Townhall.com, that's what Hillary Clinton said. Okay, just letting you know. 
Let's go to townhall.com. Hillary says, Muslims, quote, have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism, unquote. Guy Benson wrote this today. Behold the woman... Read these damn ads. Behold the woman who shall soon be crowned queen queen of the in, uh, endless self-righteous and self-congratulatory reality-based community. She said in a Twitter, in a tweet, in a whatever you want to call it, quote, let's be clear, Islam is not our adversary. Muslims are peaceful and tolerant people and have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism, unquote. That was 8.57 a.m. Uh, yesterday. This is pure claptrap. Everyone understands that the West is not at war with Islam broadly, and that an overwhelming percentage of Muslims reject violent extremism. It's been beaten into our heads by politicians of all stripes since 9-11. We're generally bright enough to draw the relevant distinction. Quote, the Muslims over here are just peaceful, faithful people living their lives, whereas those Muslims over there are radical and seek to impose a toxic strain of their faith via terror and violence. We have no quarrel with the former group which thankfully represents the large majority, the latter group must be confronted and defeated, unquote. The dynamic, this dynamic, isn't heard. It can be quickly and easily explained, yet we are constantly bombarded with dumb, sanitized denialism like Hillary's second uh, sentence above. Instead of treating us like adults, we're in infantilized <laughs> we're treated as kids infantilized something like that and to what end muslims are peaceful and tolerant we're uh, instructed and they are nothing what's and they have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism this last bit is insultingly preposterous some Muslims have quite a lot to do with terrorism, actually, like the ones that were led by their hardcore theology to kill 3,000 people on 9-11. By the way, let me interject, that didn't happen. It was all set up by the U.S. Or blow up trains in Spain, another false flag. Or target London's public transit system with bombs, another false flag. Or slaughter students at a Kenyan university. Not sure, but false flag. Or devastate a nightclub in Indonesia. Don't know what that was all about. Or shoot up a, a shopping mall in Nairobi. Or lay siege to a hotel in Mumbai. Or terrorize Nigerian schoolgirls. Or, you know, take hostages in Mali, which happened the other day or yesterday. Um... I could go on, the writer here of this article says, for some time, but those aren't real Muslims or our thought leaders inform us. Islamists loudly beg to differ. And wouldn't they know a lot more about their motives and religious teachings than Western purveyors of bumper sticker feel goodery? Try this. As someone who's convinced jihadists shouldn't be considered Muslims, whether or not Osama bin Laden's corpse uh, should have been discarded with no regard for Islamic traditions, or whether the terrorists at Gitmo should be deprived of prayer mats or halal meals or Qurans, maybe some enterprising reporter will ask Hillary these questions someday. In any case, the nothing to do with terrorism line is pain painfully nonsense. Or I should, not only painfully, but it's plainly nonsense. The more difficult part is the peaceful and tolerant phrase. It's absolutely true that the huge preponderance of Muslims worldwide abhor and reject religious violence. But as, as a writer here says, I have explored in a piece after the Charlie Hebdo massacre, there is a worrisome, sizable strain of abject liberalism or illiberalism that runs through mainstream Islam. Data from Pew, a respected global pollster, gathered two years ago. There's some information there as well. Let me just cut myself off right there, and I'm going to 
Uh, share this on the American Liberty Radio Network on Facebook. I believe. Well, no, 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 no. Let, let me, let me, let me, let me pull back here. I have a feeling that Hillary Clinton will not win the presidency. She's running for president. She won't win. I know why. And it's real simple. She's a woman, number one. Number two, she's a Clinton. And number three, she's got more baggage than Samsonite. Okay? But it boils down to this. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? Every incident that is supposedly implemented by terrorists of the free western states or whatever. Every incident that happens is blamed on a group of people doing it. When in fact the only group of people committing these atrocities against the United States is the government of the United States. I don't know why you people can't figure that one out. That's, that's just, that's obvious. It's so obvious that I, I have no clue how to answer someone when they say, well, you know, I believe the official story and I believe you're an idiot. It's one thing to look at a headline. It's one thing to look at a headline and read the headline and say, hey, you know, that kind of looks interesting and turn the page without reading the whole story. Your emotions compared to the things you've seen in your past will uh, cause you to react to that headline in such a way to where it's going to be negative when in fact you've never read the article and don't know how to react after reading the article, but oh boy, viscerally speaking, you see that headline, you're going off and you're going to go, you know, kick some ass and take some names, you know. Bottom line, folks, we need to get, we need to get our act straight. We need to push through the bureaucratic bullcrap of the executive orders, repeal every single last one of them from this regime and tackle the immigration issue specifically in regards to terrorism. Because you know damn well that the people coming over the Mexican border or anywhere coming into this country as refugees, you know, upwards to, from what I've found, upwards to 60% of them are terrorists or belong to a terrorist organization. Okay? Okay. So I'm going to take off here. That's my last little rant there on that. So I'm going to take off. I want you folks to have a great weekend because I will be back. Don't, don't forget you are responsible for you and no one else. Your perspective is one thing, you know, think about that one for a minute. Try to wrap your mind around that little piece of information. In the meantime, folks, you can get a hold of me at American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. You can also go to the website at AmericanLibertyRadio.com. Check the site out there. Everything is, is right there. I haven't written a blog in a while, so soon I will get one written. And uh, folks, have a great day. Sharing with you what... The truth, one fact at a time, without all the BS, this is the American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.com.